welcome to C3 NYC. We're so happy for you to join us. Those of you joining online, international, global, and all locations around the world. That's right, we are one church in four cities, New York City, Paris, Berlin, and Philly. And we're so excited. If you're tuning in from one of those cities or anywhere else in the world, we're happy that you're here. And look, if you're new to C3 NYC, there's a great way that you can learn more about the vision that New York that we have, the mission that we're on, um, and what our church is all about, what our story is, and that's called Growth Track. Uh, there should be a link right there on your screen. You can tap that and learn all about C3 NYC. And look, a great way to get involved, which you'll learn about at Growth Track, is dinner parties. So dinner parties happen every Wednesday. This church was actually founded as a dinner party. So it's really formed on community, which is really the whole purpose of a dinner party. And actually, we're in the same dinner party in West Village, isn't that right? That's right. And actually, I first went to dinner party without even going to service. I had just moved to New York wow. on a Tuesday and found out about a dinner party on a Wednesday. And I immediately tapped That's into community. That's how you do it. <laughs> and I got to meet Justin and all the amazing people at our dinner party and so grateful and just dinner party is a way for us to to build a more intimate relationship with, yeah, with those in the church and to, to solidify our relationship with God and each other and yeah. encourage one another in, in such a big city uh, it's, it's just a great opportunity for those who are just lost or maybe they have struggled they're struggling finding a community of friends and this, this is an open space and we just welcome you to join yeah. dinner party and build community and friends. Like, we just want to encourage you and love on you. And if, if all else, go for the good food because <laughs> I tell you, Justin, he can whip it up in the kitchen, man. <laughs> Look, I don't know about that, but we do our best. We do our best. As long as the bellies are full, we're happy. Hey, I, I, I always go for a second. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the food's always gone. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so also another really cool thing happening at the church is Alpha Marriage. So Alpha Marriage is a, is a course that's going to be happening for married couples, maybe newly engaged people, maybe people who have been married for a really long time to bring a new enthusiasm and attention to the marriage. You're going to learn really cool practical lessons about how to live out a marriage in the Lord. And that actually starts July 11th, which is my birthday, Josh. Hey, so, you know, I'm birthday, not married, man. but uh, it would have been a great birthday present if, uh, if I was married. You maybe know, that's God to... speaking to you, man. Hey, hey maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Just put in that prep work and preparing you, man. It's a slide. Lord, believe, Alpha marriage coming in. Taking applications <laughs> open now. <for> the... <laughs> anyway, <laughs> one awesome way to get involved in the church is through Vision Builders. Vision Vision Builders is our campaign to give above and beyond tithes so that we can expand our vision through New York City and throughout the world. Um, you know, you can give at visionbuilders.com and there's actually gonna be a Vision Builders update during church so you can see all the amazing things that are happening with that money. Yeah, and thanks to the generosity of, of all the givers, we're able to expand and uh, really build a foundation in all different cities like Philly. They have their first in-person oh. worship. Uh, so let's go. Thank you to all the givers um, and we just encourage. Yeah, Pastor pastors Kevin, Kevin and, and Catherine, Catherine. Yeah, they're killing it over there. It's yeah. so exciting to see like that church flourish and it's through the vision builders, right? Yeah, and just God is working. It's, it's just amazing to see that. These are revival days. Revival That's, days. Another really cool thing that Vision Builders does is it contributes to worship. And worship, our worship team just recorded their first live album That's with all original songs, yeah. 16 original songs. And most of them um, are sung at church. So we'll get at least three of those songs today. Um, so we're so excited so that y'all get to join in to these, to these worship songs. It's incredible, uh, these words and prayers that are poured out over us. Um, and we've got a word coming from Pastor Zealus from our Berlin location. So look, we're excited you're here. We hope you enjoy it. We love y'all. Happy, happy Sunday. Take care.
morning, church. Good to have you here with us. Hope we're doing well. Would you stand? I want to invite you to just lift up your voices together. We're going to sing for joy because the Lord is our strength. Let us come seek in his face right now. A million different miracles I can never list out everyone His kindness led to my repentance His mercy washed my sin away Fill me with His promises Rescue me from all my empty ways Yeah This is my inheritance, this is life that never fades away. worship you today. We just invite you to have our way. Take your place in our hearts. You alone are worthy of all of our praise. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Have your way. You're worthy, God, you and you alone. Oh, thank you, Lord. Let's sing this out. Who compares with you in power? 
power, King of glory and majesty. God, I wonder, working Father, just one glimpse and we fall at your feet. Amen. He is holy. He is set apart. His ways are higher than our ways. They're also better than our ways. <laughs> Praise God. Lord, we just invite you into this space, Lord. Help us to surrender what we need to, Lord, as Lord, we sing these songs. Lord, we just invite you into our hearts. 
Lord, work in us and through us, Lord, through your spirit that we might become more like you. We come seeking your face, Lord. Have your way in this place. In Jesus' name. Breath of God rushing like the wind to your power wake us up again heaven here no one left unchained kingdom come these are revival days from old to
I've got to admit something that while I sing that song, I personally struggle because I believe there's more for us. And I believe that we're prophesying something that is not yet fully realized. And that's okay. A lot of your life is lived in the in-between. A lot of your life is lived in between moments where you want a deal to happen or a job to happen or housing or a relationship or from engaged to married, married to kids. And we're always looking for that next thing. And what it can do is that we can cause doubt in our heart because of where we're currently at. And I just want to encourage someone here that even though you don't see the fulfillment of things you are singing, the fact that you're singing it means that you have faith that it can happen. <laughs> and so I want us to lift our hands and close our eyes. And we're not with the full band, but just some of the instrumentation. I want us to sing these words again, but I want you to sing it in faith for your family, for your friends, for your dinner party, for those you're praying for that haven't yet met Jesus and you feel like they could never meet Jesus or they're in a place where they've rejected you or you're, you're facing some things where you're in, in the in-between. Maybe you're feeling like you used to be on fire for God and maybe something has caused doubt where you feel like, God, are you still close? Let me tell you today, He is close even when you don't feel Him. You may not feel the tingling on the back of your neck, but He's still close. So lift your hands knowing He's close and you may be in the in-between, but let faith rise in this room right now. Let's sing that. From old to new, oh Spirit move and do what you long to do, Spirit move. Holy fire, healing rain. These are revival days. These are revival days. Come on, let's keep singing. From old to new. Get it in your spirit. Spirit and move. And do what you long to do. Spirit and move. Holy fire. Come on now, sing it over the city, even on these are revival this day where there's a parade in this these city. Come on, I want you to sing over these beautiful people. Come on, sing over every heart, all flesh. Come on, let love reign. Do what you long to do, spirit. Oh, these are revival days. One more time days. with we all you got. These are revival days. Oh, these are From revival days. From old to new, days. one more time. From the old to the new, oh, spirit move. And do what you long to do, spirit move. Holy These are revival days, oh, these are revival days, these are revival days. Lord, we lift up this city to you today. Lord, we lift up our church to you. We lift up every single person in this place today. Lord, I pray for revival in their heart right now. Lord, whatever they're in the in-between of, I thank you. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We don't see the evidence sometimes, but Lord, we still have faith. For faith produces the hope, and hope does not disappoint. And so Lord, I thank you for hope to rise in Jesus' name right now. God, we just let go of disappointment. We let go of resentment. We let go of things that have been holding us back. And we thank you today for something fresh to happen in this place, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, come on. Amen, amen.
You guys are singing so well. Can we give it up for the worship team? Don't they do a great job? We had an amazing first service and it's such an honor and privilege because we have our location pastors of our Berlin location all the way from Germany. We have Zilas and Asanya here, which is so cool. So you're gonna hear him preach in a minute and you're gonna be so blessed by this word. It's so powerful. Well, my name is Josh and get the honor and the privilege of pastoring here with my wife, Georgie. We planted this church in 2013, been in the city for nine years and we're loving it. New York just keeps on going. I think one more year and then I'm officially a New Yorker. Apparently 10 years is the mark. So pray for me, pray for me. Hey. We wanna welcome anyone that's here for the first time or second time or you're checking out church or visiting. Would you give us a wave right now? Just give us a wave. Fantastic, awesome. We have new friends from C3LA. Awesome to meet you guys. So good to have you here. Fantastic. Well, if you wanna check out more about church or you're visiting from out of town, you wanna visit a dinner party this Wednesday if you're in town or you're looking for a home church, check this gold card out on your seat. There's a QR code or you can fill it out and we'd love to reach out. One of the team invite you to a dinner party and uh, pray with you, talk about Jesus, know more about the church. We'd love that. Hey, why don't you introduce yourself to someone you've never met? You've never met. Come on. Never met. getting texts from people they couldn't make it across Fifth Avenue or some of the streets with uh, the parade on today but you guys found a way where there was no way and we're so thankful you're here today and I'm also proud of you because many of you thought you know what I'm gonna miss church I'm gonna go to the beach and you made it to church the beach is waiting for you after but I love this time of year. Summer in New York City. I love the smells. I love the, the vibe. It's all happening. It's fantastic. Well, we have so much coming up in the life of the church and we'd love to uh, let you know things you can sign up for, get connected to. So why don't you turn your eyes to the screen. Let's check out church news. Yes, yes. One thing I want to highlight there is if you're engaged or married, check out our Alpha Marriage Course. Georgie and I did that years ago and lots of couples have done it through our church and it's really helpful. One particular week you don't want to miss is on communication. Don't miss that one. It honestly helped us so much and uh, there's different ways that we serve married and engaged couples in church. So if you want to get married and you uh, want to check out what's ahead, you can check out c3.myc forward slash covenant. But also if you're engaged as pre-marriage, we also uh, walk through um, different courses and programs that help you prepare for marriage. Um, so that's super helpful. It's funny to me that we have degrees for all sorts of things, but the two areas you probably need it the most, marriage and kids, there's no college for that. So you wanna make sure you get the word of God and get training and God has wisdom for that, amen. 
Okay, tough crowd. Okay, we're good. We're good. Fantastic. Fantastic. Hey, we're in for a treat today. We're so excited to have our dear friends, Zealus and Asanya. A few years ago, God put it on our heart to plant churches in Europe. And the first two cities that were on our heart were Paris and Berlin. And we didn't know how it was going to happen because the only way it was going to happen is if the, God brings the right leaders, the right friends, the right people that we can really work together and collaborate across these cities. And providentially, God brought uh, this amazing couple into our world, and we've gotten to be in their world as well. They started this incredible Bible college in Germany called Momentum Bible College that's now across the nation of Germany. And it's in a few short years has really gone through the roof. And now they're starting their own C3 college in Berlin as well, which is amazing. So I was there teaching and training at the college and it's just amazing how many students are being prepared for ministry and Germany is experiencing God's love through this couple. And we as a church, I wanna congratulate you because through Vision Builders, you've actually made this church possible and supported this amazing couple and the vision is expanding. There's uh, quite a few hundred people hanging out now at C3 Berlin, dinner parties across the city, <laughs> salvations every week. I was just there two weeks ago and they had one of their biggest services. It was unbelievable, just the culture of worship and serving. So I want us to be upstanding right now here and in Williamsburg. Welcome, Williamsburg. We love you guys so much. Come on, we want to honor the Word of God. We want to honor the Word of God and honor the man that's bringing the Word. So Zealous is an amazing person. He's very uh, passionate. He's very faithful. My experience with him is that he's just a faithful guy. And when you're faithful in the little, God does much. And I know that God is going to do a lot through this man's life because he's faithful in the little. Would you put your hands together for Zealous? Wow, thank you so much. Hey, why don't we keep standing? Let's pray. God, we thank you right now that you are here, that you're here in Manhattan, that you're in Williamsburg, and that you're all also online, wherever someone's watching right now. God, we thank you that you can't wait to meet with us. You're so beautiful. You're amazing, God. God, we thank you for your presence right now. And we trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, why don't you take a seat? Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. You can't even, like, you don't even know. You don't even know. Thank you so much, Pastor Josh and Georgie and the whole team. Like, as Pastor Josh was, um, was saying, my wife and I, uh, we're in Berlin. C3 NYC Berlin. No German can ever say that. But um, it's really, really, am it, it is amazing what's happening there. It is amazing. And you know what is amazing to me is that <laughs> today is actually my wife's and I's first time in New York in a service. And we're the pastors of the church there. That is ridiculous. That just shows you how incredible God is and also how incredible our leaders are for trusting us, for listening to the Holy Spirit. Why don't we honor Pastor Josh and Georgie? Thank you so, so, so much. And also welcome to Williamsburg, Pastor Ryan and Grace. We love you guys. Uh, it's sad that you're not here, but we, we have you in our hearts. And so I, I want us to get ready because I really believe even though there's this German guy with an, a thick accent trying to talk to you, God is trying to get your attention as well. And, and before we get into the Word, I thought I'll show you a cute picture just to increase my... Um, Look at my credit, credibility. Like, if, you, if you're able to pull that off, like, you should listen to that guy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. How cute are they? It, like, can you see my, my younger daughter? Like, she's ginger in a way only she can. And we, we still don't know who the dad is, but if you know, like, <laughs> let us know. Hey, hey now, I don't know what you feel like right now, but how many of us have felt tired at some stage this week? Just a quick show of hands. Like, I mean, we're in New York. Like, is, tiredness is kind of surrounding us. I found a few crazy stats. I needed to Google what you guys in the States are like. So what I found out is this. More than 69% of workers feel fatigued at work. 
One in three adults takes something to help them sleep. We are tired. You know, we, we are probably tired physically, but my sense is, and I know it from my own life, that we are also tired of trying. <laughs> tired of trying to love. Tired of trying to trust. Tired of trying to, to have hopes and dreams and visions again because so many times we've, we've fallen short or we've experienced a loss. I don't know what your situation is like, but I believe today, and if you're taking notes, you can write this down, I believe you can actually go from being tired to thriving. You can go from being tired to thriving. And not because I have some great new formula here, the three steps to more happiness. No, it's actually Jesus I want to introduce you to. And if you've been around church, you're like, oh my gosh, can't we talk about anything else? No. The answer is no, because there's no answer that will help you. Jesus is the answer, amen? Amen. Let, let's, let, let's look at this. Uh, Hebrews 12, verse 2 to 3. Let us keep looking to Jesus. He is the one who started this journey of faith, and He is the one who completes the journey of faith. He paid no attention to the shame of the cross. He suffered there because of the joy He was looking forward to. Then He sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He made it through these attacks by sinners. So think about Him, and here we go. Then you won't get tired. You won't get tired and you won't lose hope. <laughs> that's, that's a ridiculous statement, let's be honest. Sometimes we, we, we read the Bible and it's like, really? Look to Jesus so we won't get tired? Like, how, how is it possible that this guy about 2,000 years ago came on earth. We believe it was God with flesh on, came to this earth. How is it possible that we can be less tired? We can go from tired to thriving if we look to Him. You know, some of us in this room, we don't even believe that it, He has anything to do with our lives until you look at the calendar and it's 2000 or 2022 after AD, I, didn't, I couldn't find out, like in German it's quite easy. After, after Jesus, that's what it says. It's like AD. I know it's before Christ and something fancy AD. But what I know is that the time that we live in was split in two the moment this person came on earth. Now whether you believe him or not at this stage, you must admit, like that's, that's hard to pull off. Like imagine you just say, oh like from now on I want, because I had my birthday today, I want the whole world to change the way it would be weird, right? But this Jesus person, there was something about him that changed our history. And he can change your future as well. No matter who you are, no matter your background, no matter your story, I believe this Jesus hanging on the cross can change your life today. And I know some of you have heard a message similar to this before. I want you to engage right now, whether you look uh, watching online, whether you're in Williamsburg or in this room. I believe right now for this day, God has prepared something for you to really make a difference. To really make a difference. <laughs> because the cross is trying to communicate something to you. The cross is trying to communicate something to you. And the first thing it's trying to communicate is the simple fact that Jesus is hanging on this cross, blood dripping down his face. And it's an exclamation mark, screaming, I love you. I love you. How many of us have ever been in love before? Anyone? Come on. If you, if you haven't put your hand up, like, just go to the prayer team. <laughs> and we'll pray for you. We would love to pray for you. Um, I'm this kind of person that like, I love to say I love you, to my wife especially. Uh, and 
like constantly, oh, babe, I love you so much. I love you, I love you. And I'm not telling you this because I, I, I want you to think, oh, this guy's great because listen to the rest of the story. So there's this one day about a few weeks ago where um, I came home and I was late. And then I walked inside and I saw, I left a few things that, you know, trash and that kind of stuff. Like, who cares? Uh, in the walkway rather than putting it away. And I see my wife, she's like holding our babies and like avocado all over her. And I'm like, oh, babe, I love you so much. It's so good to see you. I love you, I love you, I love you. And she's looking at me in a loving but direct way. <laughs> and she's saying, you know what? Why don't you pick up the trash, help me with the babies and be on time next time? So I was like, yeah, <laughs> I feel you, I feel you. And I was like, what's happening? What's happening? And then she said the following sentence that hit me, even though I didn't want to admit it. She continued, I love you is just an empty phrase if your actions don't match your words. I love you is just an empty phrase if your actions don't match your words. John 15 verse 13 says, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. <laughs> you know, Jesus' death on the cross, there were no empty words. He showed you that he loves you. His actions represented his words. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world. Maybe that's what you believe this morning. Oh yeah, God came to condemn. Oh yeah, yeah, Zealous or Silas or you don't know how to say my name. But... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's all right, great, great for you, but like, if I step into church, fire will come. No, 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 Jesus didn't come into the world to condemn it, but to save it. <laughs> you know what I found? Often the problem with love is not that we, that there is none, but that it's hard for us to accept it. That might be true for your relationships, for your friendships, for your romantic relationships, but it might also be true for your relationship with Jesus. You know, Jesus loves you. He's proven it on the cross. But you know what's tiring? It's tiring to try to find love and to constantly be disappointed isn't it? I'm here to tell you today in Williamsburg online and in the room that Jesus died for you as an exclamation mark screaming at you in a beautiful way. I love you. I've given everything for you. Now our part is to accept it. Our part is to accept it. We can go from tired to thriving if we really accept the love he has for us instead of trying to get it from all the wrong places. Pastor Josh preached a brilliant message last Sunday. Thank God for technology and thanks for the team who's making this happening. Um, the voice of the Father. If you haven't listened to that yet, go to the podcast and listen to it. It's, he's talking about exactly that. And I just want to reframe it from like a situation in my own life. I have two, two young daughters. They're super cute, as you saw. And we have this bedtime routine. You know, routines are great if they work. Usually they don't, but that's fine. Um, and there's this one part that I love about, like, putting my kids to bed. It's the moment where my older daughter, she's two and a half now, Scylla, and she's lying there, super cute, not always, but most of the time. And, and there's a moment where I ask her, does daddy love you because you're so cute? And she's like, yay! I'm no. And then she always says, but I'm very cute. 
you are. Does daddy love you because you're so beautiful? Yay! No. But I'm beautiful. Yes, you are. Does daddy love you because you listen so well? Yay! No. But I do listen. You do. And then there's the moment that I want my daughter to hear and to ring in her ears for the rest of her life. Daddy simply loves you because, and she screams, I'm your daughter! I wonder if we need to come to the same conclusion today. Daddy doesn't love you because you're beautiful, successful, amazing, simply because you're his son or his daughter. Come on. The cross is an exclamation mark screaming, I love you. And the cross is a full stop whispering, it is finished. It is finished. John 19, verse 29 to 30. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. Verse 30. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. You know, the Greek word used here is teleo. Finished is teleo, means it is paid for. It's already paid for. Don't you love that, these words when you're standing in a cafe? Oh, it's already paid for. I have great news for you today. All the stuff that we're not proud of, all the things that we can't seem to shake, it's already been paid for. It's already been paid for. <laughs> Oh my gosh, seriously, I believe if you really understood deep in your heart what this means, you would be a little bit more excited this morning. Because Jesus died for you. He gave everything. Let's look at this. What does it actually mean? Ephesians 2 verse 4 to 9. Are you, are you with me? Yeah. Okay, I'm, gl I'm glad. Three people are with me. But because, <laughs> say but because. Of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. In order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Now, listen to this. I need you to catch this right now. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And it, this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. The big point in this is this. The big point in this is this. It is not about your performance, but about the price that Jesus paid. It's not about your performance, but it's about the price that Jesus paid. All right, you might have heard this before, but let me let me explain this. When, when God, your Father, looks at you, we think what He sees is all the brokenness, all the pain, all the mistakes, all the things we're not proud of. But actually, the Bible says, when He looks at us, He sees Jesus. <laughs> he sees Jesus. Jesus has paid everything for you. Right now, in this moment. And all you need to do is to accept that. You know, I've, I've studied in, in Sydney, and there was this one moment in, in class. I, um, it was a New Testament, and the, the lecturer was talking about grace, similar to what I was just saying. And I was like, oh, that's great. Like, I, I really... You know, it, 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 it it's in some way, shape, or form touched my heart. But then there was this moment. I, I saw one of, my, uh, one of the guys there. He, he had a pencil in his hand, and he was, like, moving it around. And he's, he was becoming more and more nervous in a way. And I was like, this is interesting. Can, like, when you're in a room and, like, something is happening, you're like, what's happening over there? Do you know this feeling? So, I, so he moved the pencil. And then there was this moment you, where you could tell he was, like, really 
aggravated and he was standing up and the lecturer stopped the class and looked at him and was like, what, what is it? And he, like with tears streaming down his eyes, he's like, I can't believe this. I literally can't believe this. And then he, he said these words that like so deeply touched my heart. And I hope you catch this. He took his pencil and he became louder and louder and then he, sh he started screaming. He said, why on earth has no one ever told me this? Why have I for years tried to prove myself? Why on earth has no one ever told me this? And you know what I realized in that moment? This guy really got what the message was about. <laughs> I had my religious claps. <laughs> I had my amens. And this guy really got it. <laughs> I wonder if we church can today understand the power of His grace. Yeah. That it's not about what you have done. I reckon we are really tired because we're trying to prove ourselves. Yeah. We're really trying. We're, we're going through our days, we're going through our weeks because we're trying to prove ourselves. Maybe you're trying to prove something that in a way you, you didn't get from your dad when you were younger and I can, I can connect with that, but you're trying to prove yourself. But the reality is Jesus has died for you and said, It is finished. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he was so tired. This guy in our class, he was so tired because trying to be righteous, to be right with God makes you tired instead of accepting the gift. Have you ever been, here's a great thought, have you ever been tired of receiving gifts? I haven't. I can give you some things. I'm, I'm happy. I'm here all day. We don't get tired of receiving gifts, but that's actually what this word is about. The cross is an exclamation mark, screaming, I love you. It's a full stop whispering, it is finished. And it's a question mark. The cross is a question mark asking, do you trust me? Do you trust me in Williamsburg and online and in the room? Do you trust me? Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him and He will make your paths straight. You know, it's obvious, but we should put our trust in something that is trustworthy. Ever thought about that? We should put our trust in something that's trustworthy. And maybe that's why... We're tired because we've put our trust in things that have actually let us down. And it's like, I reckon in my life, I know one of the hardest things is trying to trust again if you've been disappointed, isn't it? Like the last year, to be honest, can I be honest in church? The last year has been really hard for me because there's some people that I dearly love and they've let me down in ways that I didn't think were possible. And it was so hard for me. It was so hard to try to trust again. <laughs> and, and I think the danger of, of being let down is that instead of trusting, we try to do it alone. We're tired of trying, and so we try it alone. Why should I trust someone? Sometimes it even sounds like good advice, doesn't it? Trust no one. <laughs> you have a giant within you. You can do it yourself. Well, actually, actually, great motivational speech, but then it's up to you. And what happens? It makes you tired. 1 John 4 verse 14 says this, And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely, everybody say rely, rely. on the love of God 
has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. The word rely there can also be translated by to put your trust in. <laughs> Jesus has proven his trustworthiness by the tragedy on the cross. He has proven he's trustworthy. Now I'm wondering, would you join me today to go from being tired from trying to prove yourself to trusting Jesus again? To trusting Jesus again. I literally... <laughs> I feel like there's some people here this morning and you've been let down so many times that it's so hard for you to trust. And here's the, here's the key for you. Don't, don't try to find people that won't let you down because everybody will in some stage, shape or form. So the key is not to try to do it alone or to find a better church or to, to, to find a place where you've never been hurt. No, no, the key is actually to put all your trust on Jesus. And that will actually lead to you being healed and being able to trust others. Because your identity is not wrapped up in other things that will let you down. That's such a good word for myself and maybe for you as well. It might be. The cross is an exclamation mark screaming, I love you. And you co can go from being tired of thriving, tired to thriving, if you start to accept that daddy loves you, simply because you're his son, simply because you're his daughter. The cross is a full stop, saying it is finished. And you can go from tired to thriving if you rely on what Jesus has already done for you rather than trying to prove yourself. And the cross is a question mark, also today. And whenever you watch this online or listen to it, I believe right now, Jesus is asking you. Let's not, let's not think about all the neighbors and our friends that would, it would be great to hear this message for them. Like, no, let's think about ourselves. What about you? Do you trust Jesus with everything? With everything. It's a question mark asking, do you trust me? <laughs> so think about him. Then you won't get tired. And you won't lose hope. Church, you know, this is a special moment. Because I believe that God is calling us here in Manhattan and in Williamsburg to come back to the simple message of the cross. Us together, but also you personally. You personally. I, to be honest, I don't know what you've been through the last years. I don't know what you feel like. But I know that Jesus is the place for your pain. Why don't we close our eyes in this place in Olson Williamsburg online only if you're not driving. <laughs> With all eyes closed, maybe you're here and if you're honest, you've never actually put your trust in Jesus. This is, a, this is a new concept for you. You've been trying it by yourself. You've been trying to earn love. You've been trying to, to prove yourself and you trust only in yourself or you trust in the wrong things. And today is the day where you say, no, 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 I put my trust in Jesus. Or you're here and you've been around church for a while. You know when to clap. You know when to say amen. But when you're honest in your day-to-day -day life, You trust yourself or you trust in other things rather than in Jesus. And today is your day to come back. To come back to the truth that Jesus has died for you and He has given everything for you. If it's your first time or you're coming back, what I would love you to do, and I'll quickly explain it, I'll count to three. And when I count to three, 
you can then just simply lift your hand. Why, why do I ask you to do that? Just because it's an outward sign of what's happening inside. It's, an, it's, a, it's the arm of a little child saying, Daddy, I want to accept your love this morning. I want to accept it. I want to stop trying to do it by myself. Jesus, I need you. So on three, if this is you, here in Manhattan and Williamsburg, with all eyes closed, let's be bold. Let's make Jesus the center. Let's come back to him. One, two, three. Why don't you lift your hand right now? Thank you. 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 Hands all over the place. Thank you, God. This is amazing. God is doing something new right now in your life. He, he tries to get you out of trying to do it your own way. And He's coming. He's bringing you back. He's bringing you back to the truth that you love. He's bringing you back to the truth that it's, everything has already been paid for. Jesus, we thank you. God, I thank you for every single person right now that has lifted their hands. God, I thank you for what you have done for them. And God, our response is that we want to trust you with all of our lives. God, I thank you for your beautiful presence. And I, also, just while we're... While we're at it, I believe that some of you, you've, you've lifted your hands. You've done this before. You've done this before. And, and even this moment, it, like, it has like a, a little taste of like, what if I come back to my old life? What, 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 if, what if it's just another moment? I'm here to tell you that if Jesus is the center, it's not just another moment. Maybe it's also for you like, What? I changed the script a little bit. Also, also in Williamsburg, let's quickly just stand to our feet. Come on, let's quickly stand to our feet. Just one or two more minutes. Um, if you're here, also in Williamsburg, and, and what I just said, you're like, oh, I don't know. What if I trust God again and, and I'm, I let God down? Or, or, or what, if, what if it doesn't really work out? Or you really want to want to come back to the fact that Jesus loves you here this morning? Why don't you lift your hands? Why don't you lift your hands? Be bold. God, we're standing here this morning, and we just want to say, we need you. <laughs> we don't want to start with you and then finish on our own. No, no, we want to do what you said in Hebrews. You start it and you will finish it. Holy Spirit, I pray just for your beautiful peace. I pray for, for the sense of your closeness right now in this room. With all eyes closed, why don't you, with your eyes closed, look to Jesus? He is the answer. There's some moments in your life, there's so much pain, so much trust that has been abused. Look to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, Williamsburg, thank you so much for being a part of this. I'll just hand over to Pastor Ryan. And in this moment here, why don't we, why don't we declare right now that these are revival days? As Pastor Josh was saying, maybe you don't see it in your life yet. But let's proclaim there's revival in your life. There are things about to change. Do you believe that? Guys, why don't we lift our hands? Let's, let's worship God. Thank you, Jesus. God, thank you right now as we are singing, as we open our mouths with arms stretched wide. God, we know that you will meet us where we're at. You don't need us to come to any place of holiness. No, no, you died for us 2,000 years ago. You love us the way we are. God, I thank you that right now because of your touch of heaven, God, we won't stay the way we are. Why, if you believe that, why don't we sing this out? Why don't we sing out that these are revival days for you, for your family, for your neighborhood, for your dinner party? Come on. Let's sing it out. Thank you, Jesus.
Come on, sing that out. And do what you want to do, Spirit, move, Holy Fire, heal and reign. These are revival days. Oh, these are revival days. Yeah, these are revival days. These are revival days. The Bible says in Proverbs 11, verse 25, he who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. So right now, just place your hand on your neighbor and just let's believe that that message would just soak in real deep. I believe that this is a critical revelation for everyone here to go from tired to thriving this week, to be in a place where you're not striving or wasting your energy on the wrong stuff, tomorrow or this afternoon or tonight or this week, just let those words ring in your heart that God loves you because you are his daughter or son, not because of what you do. And that's the power of the cross. So Lord, let it right now go into our heart as revelation by your spirit. The word of God is like a seed and the soil is your heart. And so Lord, I pray for good soil here today that will not be stolen by the birds of the air which is the enemy, or choked out by the cares of the world, which are the weeds, and, or Lord, burnt out by the sun, but Lord, rather land in good soil and produce a harvest 30, 60, and 100 fold. And so righteousness would be our portion, and we would know every day we have right standing before God. And all of that energy that was wasted on trying to earn and be approved is now redirected towards your kingdom towards loving others, towards serving, towards giving. So Lord, right now we pray for refreshing on our neighbor. Come on, now now just pour out, just pour out a prayer. Just pray for refreshing on your neighbor right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, upon this worship team. Man, as they have refreshed us, Lord, I just pray right now, bless this amazing team, Lord. Come on, pray for your neighbor right now. Thank you, Lord, upon these amazing worship leaders. Bless them, bless them right now. Refresh him. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. More of your anointing. Lord, thank you, Lord. A harvest, 30, 60, 100 fold in his personal world. Lord, in his music world, in his songwriting. And Lord, through his worship leading, Lord, we know the church will go to new heights, new passion for you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, right now. Come on, open your mouth. Just, come on, just... Don't pray like you're tired. Pray like in faith that you're thriving right now. Pray with grace. Pray with power. Pray with faith. If you don't know what to say, just say, thank you, Lord. I pray for times of refreshing. I pray they would thrive in Jesus' name. I pray for your grace to fill Connor right now for this week. Thank you, Lord. Fill Brandon right now. Thank you, Lord. Times are refreshing to fill Fillmore and Caitlin as they've poured out upon Zealus and Asanya right now as they've poured out in Berlin. Refresh them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. More of your power, more of your anointing. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You may be seated. Amen, amen, amen. There's a great scripture that was ringing in my heart as Zealous was preaching. By the way, can we thank Zealous for that message? Come on. So encouraging. So encouraging. I'm going to steal that uh, daddy routine, but I'll change the word beautiful, even though my sons are beautiful because, you know, they're handsome, strong. No. <laughs> it's the best. Um, I was thinking about the scripture where Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary, and I'll give you rest. By the way, what is your name, ma'am, in the white, beautiful white dress? Vanessa. Can we just love on Vanessa? You're, the reason I want to just point you out, I just sense the joy of the Lord all over you. And is this your daughter? Daughter. And I can tell she also has the joy of the Lord because of the way you've raised her. And I think this message you've lived out. And uh, what's your name? Gabrielle and Vanessa. 
just want to encourage you to sense the joy of the Lord. And even in things that you've faced, you've stayed faithful and you've lived this message out. And the Lord just wants to honor you. And we just want to honor you today. So <laughs> praise God. Awesome. Um, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. So that weight that we carry that Zealous was talking about causes tiredness. So if you carry a yoke that is heavy and not meant for you, as a young ox, that ox would get super tired and wouldn't be able to do what it was called to do, which is to plow the field. And so what the farmer would do is partner it up with a bigger ox. And Jesus is that bigger ox. So the ox thinks it's pulling the, uh, the yoke, but the, the yoke is actually on the larger ox. But the young ox is learning to, to uh, plow in straight lines and learning to sow in that way and actually prepare the land. And so it is in our life of grace. If we've got our yoke, which is a, a yoke of workspace versus grace. And so when it comes to giving right now, I want us to prepare to be a QR code. I want us to give out of the revelation of grace. When you give out of grace revelation, you're not giving to earn, you're giving because you're already blessed. I'm not giving to be blessed, I'm already blessed. And that's a whole different mindset. And what it does is it blesses the whole 100%. And God doesn't ask for the 100%, He asks for the 10% so that you could steward the whole 100% for His name. And so as I've placed God first, what it does is it reinforms the other 90%, so I don't use that 90% in a way that is works-based. What that means is I don't spend it to try and earn love. I don't try and acquire things that try to prove my worth, because then you'll end up in debt, or worse, you'll end up loving money and not God. And so grace revelation to give is huge. So if you're not giving, you'll find yourself loving money. It's just a reality. That's why Jesus talks about money so much. He says, you cannot serve both God and money. It's the only thing where he makes that statement. And so we as a generation need to, to hear this. I've been preaching these kinds of messages for nine years. And those that have grabbed a hold of it have gone on to some amazing uh, things where even if they're not successful in business, they've become debt free. Even if they're uh, successful in business, they no longer are stressed out by money because they're not fearful that it's going to be lost. But whatever you do, don't leave this place letting money be a burden, rather cast it towards God and say, God, I want you to use this for your kingdom. I have a revelation of grace here today, Lord, and I want you to sow this into your work. And so in just a minute, we're going to watch a video and give you a Vision Builders update about how your giving is actually making an impact. But right now, I want us to take what we're, we're giving and let's pray for this moment. Lord, I thank you right now as people fill out the envelope or the, the QR code on their phone or whatever way they give today. Lord, I pray we would not tip you. We would not just go through this moment, but rather we would live this message out that Pastor Silas has spoken, Lord, that we would not be tired, but rather thriving. And one of the ways we thrive is putting you first in our finances. So Lord, let this be a sweet smelling offering to you, this generosity moment in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. bless you guys. You're such a generous church. It's amazing what we're achieving together. One church, four cities. It really is. I was just in Paris and Berlin and you'll hear a bit more about that. It's just amazing through your giving, how we're impacting lives in places that are very unreached, which is so cool to see actual new salvations in all sorts of cities and so much more. So turn your eyes to the screen as we hand the buckets around. God bless you. In 2016, we started writing music. The church was three years old. Three years of church planting, multiplying, and seeing the gospel change lives. And in 2016, C3 NYC Worship stepped out and began to write, sing a new song onto the Lord. And so our team started making music that represented the heartbeat of our church, praise and worship that reflected the sound of our city and the unique story of how God has met us time and time again, through years of growth, seasons of trial, and now in revival days. 
This June, C3 NYC Worship recorded our first ever live album with 16 original songs, including the title track, Revival Days. This night saw collaboration between worship, production, creative, and teams across our church to create a night of worship where we could capture the songs that will reverberate across our cities, around the world, and through generations as we invite the King of Glory to inhabit the praises of His people. Through Vision Builders, we step out to bring gospel impact to our church, our city, our nation, and our world. Vision Builders is the building, missions, and expansion fund of C3NYC. Through the generous giving of our church, above and beyond the tithe, we sow into the kingdom and see the love of God take root here in New York City and beyond. This June, we celebrate all God has done through the sacrificial generosity of our house, and we look forward to what's to come, committing our hearts and hands to this vision. In 2017, we began our Urban Garden, a rooftop garden that partners with local food kitchens to provide fresh, nutritious produce to those in need. Now, five years later, we have seen tremendous growth through the Vision Builders. This season, we have over 300 plants growing on the rooftop, as well as two fields planted in our upstate partnership with Tiny Farm in Hudson, New York. The growing season is still early, but so far we have donated 50 pounds of garlic scapes to the Columbia County Rescue Kitchen, along with 14 pounds of radishes and three and a half pounds of mixed greens. This season, we are excited to pioneer new partnerships for donating our urban garden produce. First, we'll be working alongside P373K Brooklyn Transition School, a public high school where students with special needs engage in hands-on learning to prepare for life after school. 90% of students qualify for free or reduced lunches. In our partnership, we will donate produce to the students to use in their simulation classroom and for their families to shop from the simulation green markets. We will also involve the students with work at the garden, like coordinating deliveries and pickups, midweek waterings, and starting seedlings in the new Indoor Hydroponic Lab. We will also be working with Crossroads Community Service, a food pantry and soup kitchen that provides warm meals, healthy groceries, and safe shelter for New Yorkers from all walks of life. They are currently lacking fresh produce to provide for the community, and we are excited to donate harvest to both of these new partnerships this year. This year, we kicked off our juvenile justice ministry with the Dribeca Film Festival premiere of director Josh Leong's film, Chicken, based on a true story of a 16-year-old boy in the Bronx Juvenile Prison. This premiere featured a panel with our Juvenile Justice Impact Partners, raising awareness for juvenile incarceration in New York City and providing opportunities for industry and festival attendees to donate, volunteer, and take action. This year, our vision is to continue to create a space for communion as we host in-person mentoring and dinner parties weekly at close-to-home facilities in Brooklyn and the Bronx, mentoring 15 kids weekly. We also spent a week in Horizons in the Bronx with 10 of the volunteers painting classrooms alongside incarcerated youth with the goal of giving the classroom a fresh look after COVID. This opportunity allowed our team to tangibly bless the space as well as point the youth to Jesus through testimonies and relationship. Around the world, 785 million people lack access to safe drinking water. And through our partnership with Vapor Ministries in Jakagi, Kenya, we're funding the opening of a master well to bring fresh, clean water to these communities. The Ministry Center also focuses on educating the children who participate in Vapor Ministry Athletic Leagues, teaching disease prevention, and providing other forms of humanitarian aid. Through Vision Builders, we have seen 311,692 gospel impressions made, 116,187 health services provided, 447,115 meals served, 25,664,966 cups of water provided, and 1,293 salvations since the beginning of the year. We are one church, four cities. New York City, Paris, Berlin, and Philadelphia. This June, our lead pastor, Josh Kelsey, traveled to our Paris and Berlin locations to train and equip the team. Both Paris and Berlin saw their biggest Sunday service attendance with Pastor Josh preaching. In Paris, we hosted our first dinner party leader training of 2022 with 21 attendees. We're excited for the summer to be a training ground for new leaders looking forward to a fall launch. 
In Berlin, we are launching our own creative leadership college that will serve as a pathway to build up leaders and expand God's kingdom in Berlin. In Philadelphia, we have been gathering weekly in homes for dinner party and Sunday stories. As we celebrate, we remember not just what God has already done, but we also lift our eyes in faith for what's to come. Through Vision Builders, we pledge to give $919,353. So far, we have raised $383,398. By the end of June, we should be at $536,289, which means we're currently facing a vision gap of $152,891. As we step out to fill this vision gap, our generosity would make a way for us to launch our first ever C3 Kids summer camp in New York City. Purchase a larger truck for production and food pantry, as well as a van for weekly services and Love New York opportunities. Support our juvenile justice ministry meals on Thursday and Saturday to the young men being mentored, as well as additional resources like books and grooming kits. Continue to save on a deposit for the purchase of our own building. Invest in sound and production equipment for Berlin and Paris. Instead of weekly rentals, we would purchase Sunday equipment to increase the excellence of our services. Purchase supplies for the kids' ministry and mother's lounge to support families in Paris. And support venues for team and monthly gatherings for Philly. What we give changes lives and impacts hearts here and now. But your generosity has a legacy. When we step out in faith and generosity, we see God's love change not just this generation, but the next. Not just for our children, but for our children's children. Like the great cloud of witnesses who stepped out in faith for us today, we give our eyes to the future. We believe in a vision that we may not see in our lifetime, but we join in generosity with the eternal love that never gives up. Amazing, amazing. Well, congrats to all those that are vision builders. And as you saw, so many things are happening, which is so cool. And if you felt on your heart that, hey, I want to be a part of these amazing missional initiatives, or you want to help us with that gap and you're able to, that would be incredible. If you go to visionbuilders.myc. And for all those that pledged last year at last year's gala, we'd love it as you continue to fulfill your pledge. We can fulfill our commitments because that's how this works. We have commitments to these organizations and we are actually financing their vision as much as we're also financing church planning here. So well done again. Thanks for being a part of it. Let's give God a hand for what's what was displayed, it's so cool. Hey, let's be upstanding as we close today. Thank you for your patience and your engagement. Who's ready for some brunch? Who's ready for some food, amen. If you said yes to Jesus today, we wanna give you a gift. There's a Bible and also a great book on the basics of following Jesus over there at the I Have Decided to Follow Jesus desk or see someone on the way out. We'd love to pray with you and help you on your next steps. We'd love that. But the most important step is to actually ask the Holy Spirit. So right now, let's lift our hands and I wanna pray for all of us a prayer of blessing. It is impossible to follow Jesus without His Spirit. And so Lord, we ask right now for Your Holy Spirit to go before us, behind us, but most of all, to be within us the full empowerment of the Spirit. Lord, I pray for people's prayer languages to be rekindled this week. Lord, I pray for a hunger for your word, for your word is our daily bread. So Lord, if we're feeling tired, we would return to your word and remind our soul that we're saved by grace and loved by you. So Lord, also, if we need healing from a wounded spirit or we're facing demonic attack, I pray right now for your spirit to drive out every demon, every dark force, we come against panic attacks this week, anxiety, depression, things that are weighing down on us that cause us to be tired. And we ask for your grace, which is sufficient in every season, to fill us. And we would be reminded that you are for us and with us. 
that you never leave us nor forsake us. And if you are for us, who could be against us? And greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And nothing can separate us from the love of God. And therefore, there is no longer any condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. And so therefore, we set our mind on things above, not things here on earth, but where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. And we will be anxious for nothing, for in everything, with prayer and petition, we'll present our request to you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, through gratefulness. We enter in every day into the gates of your courts. And better is a day in, your, in those courts than a thousand elsewhere, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that you're the living word and the living water that we need so our, thought, our soul will never thirst again today. Let this be a reality in each of us, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen, amen. God bless you, church. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next week. Bring your friends. Say hi to your mom for me.